Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, my name is Scott Woods. I'm the product manager here at Hawkridge Systems for our technical communication suite. Uh, and that's Composer, Visualize, Inspection, and Model-Based Definitions. So today is what's new in 2020 uh, for our technical communications. Uh, just to kick it off here, before we get into all the what's new for these various products, uh, let's just talk a little bit about the products first, just in case anybody uh, is unfamiliar with any of these, these four products here. So Composer, first on, on this list, um, is an, it's an authoring tool that brings in CAD data from various applications. So, I mean, of course, it is a SOLIDWORKS program, brings in SOLIDWORKS parts, assemblies, no problem, uh, but it can also bring in CAD data from various other CAD platforms. And basically, if it's in 3D, there's a way to get it into Composer. Not only that, is once it's in Composer, you can compile things together. I can grab a couple parts, a couple assemblies, bring that in, nest them together, much like you would in a SOLIDWORKS assembly, uh, and then create publications from there. The publications that Composer creates are very procedural, step-by-step -step kind of assembly, assembly instructions, operation, maintenance procedures, things like that. Uh, we can create PDF, printable, you know, or you can view them digitally, view them printed, uh, or something like video. Uh, so there's a lot of different outputs that Composer can do and it's just the package that will create all of that technical documentation for procedural operations. Uh, next here is inspection. Now, the what's new for inspection has been delayed. There was uh, some complications with some of the new features that came out, and it just didn't pass you know, SOLIDWORKS' um, standards. And, and so that will come out soon. We just don't know exactly when. But when it is, of course, we will have another presentation to say, you know, what's new in inspection. We just can't talk about that yet because it's not out yet. And I'm, I'm expecting that within the next month or two. That's my expectation. Uh, but what inspection does is it creates the FAI, the first article inspection reports. Inspection has an add-in for SOLIDWORKS and also installs as a standalone application. I should have also mentioned that Composer is a, it also installs as a standalone application. Composer does not have an add-in for SOLIDWORKS that runs within SOLIDWORKS. Inspection does. So you can do an inspection based directly off of your SOLIDWORKS drawing within SOLIDWORKS, or you can use the standalone application of inspection and bring in the uh, like PDFs from various other CAD applications and create those, those first article inspection documentation from those sources. Uh, I should also mention that when you buy inspection, you get both. You get the add-in for SOLIDWORKS and the standalone. They're not sold separately, so you don't have to choose which one you, you want. For Visualize, this is a photorealism rendering tool. So it runs outside of SOLIDWORKS like Composer, and it brings in CAD data from various sources like Composer as well. So, of course, SOLIDWORKS, it's a no-brainer. That's going to bring it in. But basically, anything else out there that's in 3D, you can bring that into Visualize and you can render it. So Visualize is, is for rendering photos, you know, still rendering, static renderings, all the way up to VR, AR content, and everything in between, like video animation. You can create a video animation that you can look around, look behind you as the animation is going. And then you can create even AR publications now, which is pretty cool, which is augmented reality. For model-based definitions, this is a tool that is an add-in for SOLIDWORKS, so you have to have SOLIDWORKS to use model-based definitions, and it's driven by DIM Expert, or also no known as model-based definitions dimensions. Now, today in SOLIDWORKS, you can create annotations and, and, and dimensions and notes in the 3D space in your 3D models, and that lives in SOLIDWORKS. Model-based definitions allows you to take that data and push it out as a 3D PDF, as an eDrawings file, or as a step 242, which is a step file that will contain that, that PMI data, which is product manufacturing information. Okay, so let's get into the what's new content. So for Composer, we'll kick it off with, uh, with Composer here. We have uh, SOLIDWORKS RX supports Composer now. For our, this is our, for our additions into the software. Uh, so SOLIDWORKS RX, we've had that for SOLIDWORKS for a long time. Uh, that now supports Composer. 
So the, uh, and then also for importing, we, when you import a SOLIDWORKS assembly into Composer, it brings in the appearance and it also brings in the DIM export annotations. Those same DIM export annotations that are used for model-based definitions will also come into Composer. For features, the SOLIDWORKS views import. And this is probably my most favorite out of all of the, the what's new for TechComs this year. Because what this will allow us to do is any view made in SOLIDWORKS will then import into Composer. And I've always been asked, you know, should I create this view in SOLIDWORKS? Should I create a Composer? And typically we say, well, let's make that Composer because it's a little bit faster. Uh, but if you are creating stuff like legacy data in SOLIDWORKS, you know, in 2020, we can now bring that into Composer and we can animate it. So exploded views, we can animate, which is, which is huge. Uh, then any views we import, we or even create in Composer, we can then now save as a 360 degrees capture. It's going to be a series of images that capture a, a 360 degree rotation of the model. So we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. Uh, PDM integration. So you know we expect all SolidWorks tools to work within PDM. It's part of the family. Uh, Composer now does that. So just our, our expectations have been fulfilled and PDM is built right into SOLIDWORKS Composer so we can use it. Uh, we've always been able to use Composer files with PDM, but we had to go kind of outside the application, don't have to do that any longer. For enhancements, for linear arrows, we can type right within the arrow instead of trying to put an annotation next to it and try to line them up and all that fun trickery stuff, no longer have to do, you just write right on the arrow, which is really convenient. And then MP4 video publication. So if you've ever tried to make a video animation with Composer. In the past, it's always been AVI. Now we do our in, the industry, industry standard MP4. There's no conversion necessary. Really nice. Okay, so for the RX, you can see that when you load up the SOLIDWORKS RX, and if you're unfamiliar with what this is, is it's uh, the report for anything buggy and crashes and things like that. So if you're experiencing a problem with the application, you can uh, pop this up. You go to problem capture, now you choose composer, run composer, try to recreate that problem. And if the problem recreates, it captures it, allow you to send that to SOLIDWORKS so they can actually see what it is to fix. So really convenient new feature there, new addition. Okay, so, and then uh, for the importing of textures and PMI, um, let's go ahead and show that here. So just pop up composer. Here's the file that we're going to be working with here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that part here. Just navigate to the right component. So we got, um, let's do this part. I know that it has a texture and some PMI on there. Now the option for importing, it's going to be over here on the right. You might have seen this previously. Uh, it did come out a little bit ago, uh, but it is, is rolled into the what's new for 2020. And so for the import textures, that's going to import the SOLIDWORKS textures. And for the import PMI, I like to override color. By default, it comes in kind of gray. I like to make it black or red just so it stands out. You can always color it later, but this does it at the import, so you don't have to worry about it. You can just say open. Uh, this is going to take about 30 seconds or so. Uh, so what it's doing is it's taking that that SOLIDWORKS file and it's converting it into Composer, bringing in that PMI information and the appearances from, from SOLIDWORKS. And uh, what we can do with this is work it into our publications. And so if you need dimensions, measurements, or if you, you know, or have already applied appearances in SOLIDWORKS, that you don't have to apply those in, in Composer. So it just saves that work from being done twice. So there's the texture imported from SOLIDWORKS, looks really nice. And it's gonna be applied exactly the same way it was applied in SOLIDWORKS. So if you don't like how it's applied, you know, you fix that in SOLIDWORKS, it would, it would fix it here. Uh, then these annotations came in just like that, and they're black, how I specified. And these actually come in as collaboration data. So when I go to my collaboration tab, we see all the PMI that we have. We can turn them off and on from there. 
which is really convenient. So you're not stuck with them. So if you bring in too much, you can hide, or if you want different views and you want to display you know, this dimension on, on a single view, you can do that as well. Okay. All right, so next on the list is importing of those views. And then that 360 spin, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of. You can, you know, we've, uh, we could do this in Composer in the past, but there's a lot of steps, animation in order to get it done. And now it's a free, now, now it's a single button that we click and we get that nice, uh, nice rendering, uh, the nice image output. All right, so let's show that here. So going back to Composer, you can see that all of these views here, these views were created in Composer, but these views here were actually imported from SolidWorks. So if you've ever done a an exploded view step in SolidWorks, you can say, hey, take these parts, explode them out, set a distance, uh, and then you can collapse that, and you can show that as a video in SolidWorks. You've been able to do that for years. Well, now we can take these views that SolidWorks creates and they automatically come into Composer and we can animate between them. You can see how it actually animates in between those. If I wanted to say that as, as a video, I could. Now for any view that we have in Composer, we can then save that out as a 360 image. And that's in the workshops for high resolution, resolution image. So they've added that to the high res image workshop under multiple. And all you have to do is say 360 capture, uh, specify the uh, the number of captures it's going to do, specify a location, save it out, and you can see that there's actually a series of, of formats we can save that, bitmap, JPEG, TIFF, and PNG. We can export those out and we get something like this. So you can see there's just the JPEG image output and when I open this up and say next, we can see that's exactly how that animated GIF was made inside the PowerPoint. Uh, various uses for this, you know, website uses, if you want to make a 360 model that somebody can spin on, on a website or uh, in, incorporate into a video or marketing content, or just to get some extra views to, to use in various other, other um, publications. So many uses for this, it's a pretty, pretty simple output. And it doesn't have to be raster, which is what I have here, JPEG, bitmap, all raster content. There is actually a, uh, let's switch workshops to the tech illustration. And you'll see in the multiple, we have the exact same thing. So we can export a series of vector art as well. Uh, if you wanted to take that into Illustrator or various other applications, we can do that as well. And that's gonna be an SVG uh, output. Um, for PDM, if you've, um, I don't know if anybody has, has caught this yet, but everything I've been doing so far has all been through PDM. So this whole presentation is through P PDM. Composer works through PDM, as you can see, um, uh, once we get into to the other, um, almost every other application does as well. So everything I'm showing does as well today, uh, which is really convenient. But uh, if I show that here, We'll see when we take Composer, there is now a new tab for PDM. And I have everything I've worked on right now and I could check it in right now. So from Composer, you know, I don't have to save, because before you'd have to save the file, close it, navigate to the vault through Windows Explorer, uh, copy that file into the vault, check it in, and then you're done. Now all you have to do is say, check in, check in, and it checks it in. So Saves you a lot of time, a lot of steps, a lot of uh, possible, you know, messing up because you'd move that file to the wrong, wrong location or something like that. It works how it should work, which is really nice. One last thing for Composer here is, um, well, two last things for Composer is uh, the inlay text you see here for arrows and then also that MP4 video output. So if I come down to where I placed an arrow, you'll see that that inlay text is just a new property for arrows and it's for the linear linear arrows uh, today. So that's that's what they added it to. And so in the properties panel, 
when you see a new option down here, I have the arrow selected and it says inlaid text. And for that, we have, what is the text? And it says, uh, I type whatever I want. Let's say, uh, remove shell, something like that. Now it applies there and I simply update the, the view. Uh, and then the, we can work this into the animation as well. So when I switch to animation mode, you can see we have an animation down here. And if you're unfamiliar with how to uh, create animations, it really is as, as easy as taking a view that we've made and just dragging it and dropping it into the timeline. And that creates a new new, new uh, point and uh, key point on the keyframe on the timeline for animation. So I can do something like that and extend that out. Now all I have to do is switch to my video workshop. And we would save this out as, let's see, into the vault. I could directly uh, push that right into the vault now. So I can say MP4. Uh, we have uh, FLV and MKV as well, this new. So by publishing direct to the vault is really convenient because we probably want to keep the composer content and the publications probably together and in the vault so we can rev control that. We can do that. So I could I could save this video right to the vault and then check it in, which is really convenient. And if I go to my Windows Explorer here, we'll say we'll see for my publications. I actually have an MP4 that I saved up previously, and that's the same one we're working on right now. So we'll open that up, take a look at it. Just like that, we've got our video. And of course we can check that in. Well, I just click it, check it in right here. We can rev, rev control the publications along with the composer um, documents or the composer uh, uh, projects. Okay, so next on the list is model-based definitions. So for model-based definitions, we have, um, this is a course, uh, well, as I stated previously, it's an add-in for, for SOLIDWORKS, and it's going to work off the PMI data. And so now we have a, PM, a 3D PMI compare tool, which is actually a pretty big deal because when you have different revisions, previously you'd say, well, what has changed? And if you don't know that it hasn't been documented, it's really hard to tell what is, what is adjusted. Well, now we'll, comp now we'll comp compare the different re revisions and tell you what PMI is actually has adjusted. And that's the uh, that's, PMI is this data here. It's the visual product material information. I'm sorry, product manufacturing information. And so for the enhancements, we now have an annotation folder uh, and we can search by annotation view and type. Now, this doesn't sound like a big deal, but it really is because if you can't locate or easily navigate within an application, it just gets frustrating and hard to work in. And so you see that they've really cleaned that up just to make the, the, the experience a whole lot smoother. And let's show that here. So this is the, uh, this is the uh, 3D PMI compare. And then we'll show the annotations folder. So now I'm in SOLIDWORKS, no longer in Composer. I'm in SOLIDWORKS and I have the add-in for model-based definitions active, which is right here. Okay, so uh, first thing, let's go ahead and show that PMI compare. So it's a new icon that's at the very end of the list right here for the 3D PMI compare. We'll select that, a new um, um, tab pops up on the, on, the, on the right, and we can say that this is the file we have open, and I wanna pull in a new file. We'll pull that directly from the vault. And we'll just say that this is Rev2, Rev B. Let's open that in to SOLIDWORKS. Just like that. So you see we're comparing this guy with that guy. Uh, sure, let's go ahead and compare their names as well. We'll run the comparison. And anything in green is going to be the modified data. Uh, anything that was new is purple. That's the unique data. So this created uh, kind of a unique um, face here because that di the dimension of this cutout actually changed. And so if you take a look at this, uh, Rev B, that hole is a five and a half, and then Rev A, it was 5.407. So it tells us exactly what has adjusted. 
Okay, so let's go back to this guy here because I want to show how we can easily navigate through where these where all this PMI is located. And that becomes a challenge when you're dealing with you know two-dimensional data in three-dimensional space. It can get really cluttered. This is situated quite nice. Um, but you know when you first created it, it might be all over the place, right? And you gotta go through and you gotta you gotta go through and adjust it and say, oh, you know, this should be placed here, should be placed in the top view and things like that. When in the past it was hard to figure out where items were located and then where to where they actually should be located, where should I move them? But now when we go to our annotations folder, you can see that everything is nested nicely under what annotation view it's in. And when I mouse over it, it will highlight the what I have selected here or what I have moused over. It will highlight it on screen and then it also highlights the components it's, asso it's associated with. So it's just cleaning it up and making it look a whole lot nicer. And I can filter this. So right now this is filtered by annotation view. And I can filter this by, by feature. So instead of by the view, I search by, I just right click that, sort by annotation type. And now I can say, where's all my GDNT? Cool, where's all my, my basic uh, dimensions? Uh, that's kind of everything. Where, where are the notes? There are the notes. So again, just setting it up so it's easier to navigate. Okay. Now moving on to visualize. So with visualize, there is quite a few things that, you know, I, it's hard to show in a presentation. So we'll just kind of talk about them. The first few things in the list here. So that is uh, the AMD Pro Render support. So up until this point, visualize has only been supported on NVIDIA hardware technology uh, for the CUDA cores and for the, the GPUs on the, the newer kind of graphics card. And that's going to be your consumer uh, graphics card, uh, which is made for mostly video games, all the way up to the latest of the, uh, the Quadra line. So those are still completely supported and recommended, of course. But if you are using AMD Pro Render, uh, there's a good chance that's going to work in 2020, as long as it's of the, the newer technology. And so that's going to be the Radeon ray tracing that is now going to work right within Visualize. So and going down the list here for the NVIDIA RTX support. So RTX is the new technology that NVIDIA has put out that's replacing the GTX line. So GTX been, has been around for a long time. Uh, those cards are still supported, uh, but we have you know full support under RTX now, which is the newer line of new 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 uh, lineup for the um, NVIDIA consumer-based cards, and the Quadro cards, too, are also running off RTX technology. Uh, and those are fully supported, and they're just going to make things a whole lot faster now in 2020. Uh, for AR, which is augmented reality, and VR, uh, virtual reality exports, the GLTF file format, that's kind of the standard for these kind of exports and, and what everybody's using today for headsets and different kind of technologies and softwares for the import. Uh, so Visualize is gonna be able to export in that format. So for AR and VR, we can export our, our renderings and view that in, in, that, in, those, in those headsets, which is, which is really, really cool. And that's gonna set up a whole new, um, you know, for future uh, collaboration and things like that, which is pretty exciting. The um, uh, if you are using a 4K monitor, you might have noticed that this resolution resolution scaling isn't all that great. 2019 and previous, uh, that's been fixed in 2020, so it's now it's going to fully support the 4K uh, monitors. Now instancing, instancing is going to reduce the file size of your visualized projects. I'll talk a little bit more about that here um, once we get through the the top the highlights here. Um, but it's a pretty cool feature and it's going to just speed things along and make things a lot smaller. For uh, features, PDM integration, imagine that. So uh, just like Composer, we got it in Visualize as well. And so we can check in, check out the projects, uh, publications, all the above, and do that directly from Visualize without leaving the application like we've had to do pre previously. So big. Uh, 
big enhancement there. Okay, so for the enhancements, we got support for three new um, three new inputs. So we have our AXF measured materials, the NVIDIA model materials, and the IES light profiles. Um, so let's let's uh, let's go on to the next slide, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about what we have here. All right. So for the instancing, what is going on is it's this is a 2019 visualized project, and it's just about 76 megs. Once I brought that exact same assembly into Visualize for 2020, it cut it down to about 35 megs. So quite a big, um, quite a big reduction um, for the file size for that project. And this is based off an 86 meg SOLIDWORKS assembly. So you see that in 2019, it's pretty comparable to the same size of the assembly. The, vi the visualized version is going to be in this, and it was cut in half in this in this uh, example here. It is based on how many different unique components you have in that assembly. So if you have, you know, a bolt, not a screw, whatever it is, and you have that in multiple locations in your assembly, that's going to reduce quite drastically in 2020 because it's the same component. So previously, if I had a, a screw that was in my SOLIDWORKS assembly and it was in there 54 times, I brought it into Visualize, it would bring it into Visualize 54 times. Now it brings it in once and repeats it with graphical data. This is not a CAD application. We're not doing any modifications to the design. So all we really need is to be able to represent that geometry graphically for our renderings and it does a much better job of doing that going forward. Okay, so for the PDM integration, as you can see, the exact same thing, check in, check out. We can render directly to the vault, then you navigate through Windows Explorer, check in that way. Um, so the publications, you, you can't um, check those in through the interface of Visualize, but you really don't need to. Really what we're concerned about there is the Visualize projects and the importing of SOLIDWORKS data, that kind of stuff. So full support on that line there. Okay, so now we're getting into the, the, the fun stuff. So for the AXF and the NVIDIA model materials. So what AXF is, uh, it's an ex appearance exchange format. And how these appearances are created is they're actually scanned from physical objects. Uh, so it's a pretty new um, kind of way of getting materials, and I really like it because, you know, all of these materials and stuff, uh, you uh, you have a couple options in the past. Do you, if you wanted to, let's say, make a render a rusty truck with, you know, that's been driving through the mud and the thing's, you know, 80 years old, uh, it's really hard to convince somebody of that. And so in the past, basically, you could take a photo of a piece of the truck try to create a material from that, but then you have this repeating pattern and it's just obvious that it's a, that it's a um, uh, rendering. Or you could say, okay, I'm gonna make it all, all nice, you know, metal, and then try to do some bump mapping and some decals and stuff for the mud, and it's just a lot of work. Well, now these appearances, they actually have these, these scanners that scan the surface of the object and it pulls out the, the light data uh, and for bump mapping to the 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 light sources and the um, and the color and uh, of course the color but uh, uh, but then it creates a nice material of that that we can now use and visualize so long explanation for that but just a background on what that file format is I'm really excited about it we can now use it in inside of visualize so and then the NVIDIA MDL materials the model material or I'm sorry I call it model materials because MDF, that's really material definition language. That's what it stands for. And this has been around for a long time. It's been NVIDIA's solution to materials. Uh, they have a, a, a big library of really good stuff. Uh, we can bring all those in and use them as well. Okay, so let's show that. So jumping into Visualize, got that same truck. And you know what, before I go into that, let me show you something real quick here. So this is an animation, and this is actually imported from SOLIDWORKS. So this is the SOLIDWORKS exploded view. We can now, those come into Visualize as well, which is really sweet. 
And so it's taking those views, animating them inside of SOLIDWORKS, bringing that into Visualize so we can, we can play that. So I want to throw that out there. It's not really a what's new, but it's, it's cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's zoom in and let's apply a material here. So how this is done, um, just uh, the Appearances tab within Visualize, we want to bring in, we'll start with the, the NVIDIA. Let's do that one. So I'll hit Add, I'll say Import Appearances. Uh, my, imp my appearances are actually in the vault, so let's jump into the vault and pull them out of there. So we got mm, NVIDIA right there. And we'll just, uh, so you see it, it's a single, like this here is a single material, but it's not. There's actually a lot of images associated with that metallic paint. So this is, I'm bringing in a metallic paint kind of swatch. And so you see our, our little icons there that uh, just aren't lighting up and they should. Um, I'll be fixed soon. But you see this is a dark green. This guy's a tan. This guy's like a salmon. And if I bring that in, we can view it. And let me switch to um, better better rendering here so we can actually see the details. If I zoom in, you can see the paint chips. It just does, it's re the really nice materials. Uh, they're very detailed. They're very, very realistic looking. Um, and the, a lot of work has been gone into these to make them look really nice. Let's bring in, uh, let's do it, let's do green. There you go, I think that shows a little bit better there. Up my passes so we can get a better look at this. Just want to show that you can see that paint flakes come into to life there there now. So, yep, I really like these materials. All right, so that is the NVIDIA materials. Now let's bring in the a AXF. So we'll just let this process for a second. There it goes. Okay, so I'm going to import a new material or appearance. They call it appearance. It's actually visualize call it appearances other applications call it materials uh, they really are one of the same so now going back into the vault let's go to visualize and I'm going to pull in the AXF measured material and this one is a basketball so this is a basketball that's been scanned so the texture of the basketball has been scanned and when I bring this in, let's do the same thing. When we zoom in and really look at this, let's do, uh, I zoomed in too far, let's do this. I'm gonna turn off my render so I can navigate a little bit more freely here. That's just a preview of what it's gonna look like. And then let's give it a good rendering so we can see that, that basketball appearance. So this is an actually a, a physical basketball that's been scanned, and then we get the um, image data off of that. So if there was any imperfections, if someone had kicked it and left a, a scuff mark with their shoe or a dog bit it or something, that would shine. That would come through into the material. Um, and we also have what is called bump mapping. So if you look at this at an angle, you can actually see that there's an actual texture associated with that that imported. Um, the imported appearance so it actually has physical texture to it it's just not a flat surface it's just uh, if you're going to try to make something look photorealistic then you should probably be you know going the extra step of making sure that you know it's not a flat because nothing in nothing in real life is flat everything has a certain texture to it unless it's like glass even that can be scratched anyways so now we have our our uh, 3D model that has our appearances applied to it. So let's go ahead and let's add that um, that light profile, which as well go to the next slide here, which is the IES light profile. So if you're unfamiliar with what this is, then it probably won't help you out too much, right? Because SolidWorks uh, Visualize Professional has a lot of lighting controls. We can create lights and we have we have all of that built in. So that's probably what exactly that you need. However, there are some industries, there are some, some uh, quite a few customers I've talked to who require this. 
Uh, it is a requirement in some situations. So if you are required to use IES Lite profiles, Visualize Now now supports that. Um, they are, uh, so IES is Illuminating Engineering Society. I, I love that. It's Illuminating the Engineering Society. Anyway, so this is very detailed, specifically created lighting profiles. We bring it in and we can use that in our projects if it's needed. So let's show it. Let's go to back to visualize here. And I'm just going to say scenes. Let's add a new light. Before I do that, I want to point out that this currently has lighting. And so if I take this, um, let's do this, switch that to accurate rendering. If I were to turn the brightness down to, let's say, zero inside of this project. You get something like that, right? Uh, right now, I have my environment that's illuminated by my my model itself um, because it's a backplate, right? So I just want to say the lighting is only affecting the model, not the environment. That's why it's all the white the white background. But we can see right now I have no light casting onto my model. So let's go ahead and bring a light in. So to do that, first I want to create one, and we'll say new light, and I want to pick pick a target. So what you do is you point at a part on your model and say, yep, that's where the light is going to cast. Now I want to be able to decide where the light source is coming from. You see it's kind of coming from the top left. It's actually not too bad. I'm just going to adjust that here a little bit just so we can show this a bit better. Actually, it's coming from the back side. So let's take that and let's move it. So I want it to come from, you can see the shadowing that's starting to be generated there. Let's bring it up. I'll bring it up. There, that works. So I'll just spin the model so I can get that lighting there. And you can see now the lighting is coming from behind the camera. It's being cast onto the, the model and we're getting that, that profile. Let's switch that to accurate rendering. So we can see what light is being cast right now. This is a light panel. This is just an area light that's default in Visualize. And I'm going to change that to the IES light profile. So now that I have my light set, I say, okay, what profile do I want to bring in? Again, that's in the vault. Let's pull it out. And let's go ahead and bring in, let's bring in the comment, sure. It's going to be quite bright, but an idea of what that is. So that is uh, that's a light profile based off a comment. Um, that's how it's been created, uh, and I can adjust the brightness here. I can scale that up or down. So the intensity of of that light. And you can see it's it's quite washed out now. But let's uh, let's change it here. I brought it up to 414. So let's change that light from Comet to let's do maybe like the pair. Uh, let's do the umbrella. It's a little bit more subtle. It's more of an ambient light. Use that. See what we have, but of course we want to change that brightness down to like I don't know, 100. Try that. What I'm doing is I'm just jostling this a little bit just to get that rendering to kick into gear. So something like that. So this is a umbrella IES light profile that we're bringing in. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so that wraps up the what's new for TechComs. Um, keep in mind for inspection, when that has been released, then we will um, announce that in one form or another to let everybody know what the uh, what the new features are in inspection. But just a quick recap here for Composer. We have the RX support, so the Solar's RX, you change that to Composer able to capture the uh, any bugs or crashing that Composer is experiencing. Highly recommend if you do experience anything to use that because it does help improve the, the software for the future. The uh, importing of SOLIDWORKS appearances. So if you are applying those textures, those appearances inside of SOLIDWORKS, those are going to come into Composer, saving you time. You have to apply it in both locations. 
Uh, if you don't apply it in Composer and SOLIDWORKS, you can still apply it in Composer, by the way. That's not a limitation. So uh, imports the PMI, the product manufacturing information, MBD dimensions, DIM expert data. It's called a couple different things. Uh, all those annotations, notes, and uh, dimensions all come into Composer so we can use them for Composer publications. The uh, SOLIDWORKS views, so if you are creating any of those named views, custom views inside of SOLIDWORKS, uh, the exploded views, they import into Visualize. The 360 degrees capture, so once it's in Composer, I'm sorry, I just said Visualize. I meant to say those come into uh, Composer. Uh, the 360 degree capture, that exports from Composer to a series of images that basically create like a snapshot of cameras around a model. We can do various things with those, including video. PDM integration, PDM is built right in, check in, check out. Inlay text over linear arrows, so any linear straight arrows, we can put text on there, uh, which just eliminates the need for multiple annotations. You can put it right on the, the arrow, tell what, what, what that arrow is actually meant for. So define that a little bit better. MP4 video publication, no longer tied to AVI. We can import, export as MP4, put that on your website. No need to do any kind of conversion anymore. Model-based definitions, uh, 3D PMI compare. So when the when the uh, model has changed, we can compare the two, see which one is adjusted, and and move on from there. Uh, annotations folder, um, sort by annotation view and type. Very convenient. So we can actually organize and, and make sure we manage that 3D PMI instead of it just making a big mess. For visualize, AMD Pro Render, AMD cards now supported. Uh, the, N the NVIDIA RTX is supported. Uh, the GLTF Explorer for AR, VR. I'm very excited about that. Um, great to see, it's gonna be great to see what that evolves into for collaboration purposes. Uh, 4K monitor support. Instancing, so this is another big one to reduce the size of your visualized projects. And it's just gonna, anything that has multiple instances of a component, it's gonna be a much smaller project. PDM integration, just like Composer, built right in. Uh, AXF, measured materials, NV NVIDIA uh, materials, import, and then also if you need to use those IES light profiles, those now come into Visualize as well. Okay, well, thank you everybody for attending.